It's wonderful to be here, and I want to just say thank you so much for the invitation. Um, thank you to iHouse. I'm honored, actually, to have been invited uh, to speak to you all about the presidential election. And uh, I will say that Dr. Lilian Crizal and I struggled a bit on uh, what we should call this discussion. Um, because I have many, many interests and have opinions on many, many issues. But we decided that we would focus on demographic changes and its possible impact on the presidential election by focusing on the demographic changes and what they might mean to the ultimate result in the election. But I want to be very clear that this discussion about demographic changes and its impact is, cannot be a discussion solely about demographic changes. That is to say, there are many, especially in the media, who are very prone to focus on things like um, majority white vote seems to be supporting candidate Governor Romney, majority of minorities are supporting uh, President Obama. And I think that when you look at it that narrowly, it is a disservice to the millions of Americans who will be voting. That is to say, no one is just one thing, as uh, to borrow a phrase from it, Professor Edward Said. Why am I stressing this? I believe our media and our political pundits keep trying to tell us that the electorate is racialized. And while I will be absolutely at the forefront to say race in America and difference in ethnicity is as uh, intense and as um, difficult as it has ever been, the reality is that mo Americans care about many of the same issues. I have traveled this country, I started to add up the states, and I'm not quite at 50, but pretty close. And what you find is that, yes, there are differences, but most people want the same thing. Indeed, I would say everyone wants the same thing. You know, security in their home, uh, good schools, good jobs, a dignified retirement, health care. So you wonder, what is this yin and yang of focus on diversity, but if we all want the same thing, why is it that we can't figure out a path to that place? Well, we do know one thing. Both campaigns, and uh, even before that, the primaries, have spent millions of dollars trying to figure out what are those issues that Americans care about? All that polling, all that focus group. Um, What's the most important issue? What will motivate them to vote? Is it tax cuts? Is it Libya? Is it Iran? The deficit? Healthcare? Immigration? What is it? Or is it, as some people have been suggesting, really as simple as it's the economy, stupid? Um, as famously said by James Carvel 20 years ago. Now, I can say that since I worked on that campaign. And I can tell you that while James Carvel may think that it was that simple, uh, those of us working on the campaign understood that it wasn't just that. That in fact you needed to do specific outreach to different groups to talk about these issues and how the economy and how their concerns. In some ways, I've come to believe that what Americans want is uh, an acknowledgement of their identity but also a connection that we all understand that we're Americans. Now, all the big issues, the deficit, the economy, jobs, how we compete in a global economy, um, opportunity, need to be seen through the prism of the salad bowl, the mosaic, whatever metaphor you like to describe the American electorate. Can I say it again? We are not monolithic. Multiracial, multiethnic, multireligious, multifood. Have you tried to throw a dinner party in Berkeley? 
I have. You have to have a meat dish, a seafood dish, and a vegetarian dish, and God forbid you have a vegan. I once had a guest who was allergic to six things, two of which were normal, but I digress. The po my point is that you cannot focus on the issues without understanding the electorate in all of its complexity. But if you only focus on the demographics, that one category, you could lose an election. So I want to start first with an examination of that electorate and then discuss the various ways these demographic changes may play in the upcoming election. And lastly, some thoughts on the future elections in our democracy. So let's see if I can master the 21st century. One thing I want to focus on, the country. Where is it growing? From this slide, and first let me please uh, give credit. This is a compilation of various slides. Um, yes, I spend my, a lot of time looking at politics and the electorate. Chris Crom from the Institute on Southern Studies in North Carolina. Dr. Robert Jones and Daniel Cox from the Public Religion Research Institute. And Dr. Rui uh, Teixeira from the Center for American Progress, one of my colleagues.